Talk Word, Cringeworthy Tales. And now, your host, Weekly Humorist Editor-in-Chief, Marty Dundix. Hi, and welcome to Talk Word. I'm Marty Dundix, and this is uh, Talk Word, a fun little podcast where professionally funny people come to tell awkward and cringeworthy stories. Uh, I'm very excited about uh, my guest today. This is her second appearance on Talk Word. She was here a little over a year ago. Um, she is just like a comedy media uh, mogul machine. She's constantly producing and creating new platforms and shows and things. Uh, so welcome back to Talk Word, Brittany Brave. Hello. Hi. Hi. Comedy media mogul machine. I don't deserve that. Come on. You're so uh, active, though. You're so busy doing all these like cool projects. The first time you mm-hmm. came in, you were doing a project with... Uh, Doing a thing called cat call, right? Yes, and it was there was a, a collective group, so so far, so mm-hmm, far, mm-hmm. and um, I went out to a show in Queens, uh, Woodside, Woodside and, for our one year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. that was a great show. Thank you. Um, and since then, you do a lot of things. You do um, like a tarot card show, a QED. I do, which I still want to go to. Yeah, it's fun. It's improvised tarot. Yeah. It's uh, comedians' bullshit tarot readings for audience members, and then there's a psychic there. That and comes you in. produce that show? Yes, I came up with it and I produce it. And yeah. there's a lot of great people on that show. You, yeah. you book that show too? I do. Yeah. Is it's that a, monthly? It is. Mo- now it's bi-monthly at okay. QED. Um, every Sunday, it's the second Sunday of the month at eight thirty, and we have a lot of returning players. We have like a main kind of cast that we cycle through, but mm-hmm. then every other month I bring new comedians and improvisers on and it's it's a great time we deal with some real life problems too so you're doing so, um readings from people in the audience yeah so, so you're really reliant on that audience oh absolutely okay yeah the first show was a little bit it took a second to crack everybody open and kind of get them like ready to go and, what if like, no get one re- comes oh uh, well, then i guess we don't have a show <laughs> <laughs> has that happened uh no not okay. yet fortunately wow. yeah we have um i think it's just astoria is like really nice and communal and like qed is such a great following yeah. um and i do think it, it, by no means tooting my own horn but i i think like tarot is really popular now in mm-hmm. astrology and, and that's I, with the cards and that's with the people on the cards yeah and- how many different cards are there in tarot? Oh, God, that's a good question. Yeah. Is it is it more than 10? I should know this. Definitely more than 10. Okay. There's like a major arcana and a minor arcana. I should know this. I think it's upwards of like 70 cards. That feels about right. So it's more than a playing card deck. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they, um, and I do, I, I, I like that hippy dippy shit. I regret it. This is where that's everyone fun. tunes out. No. No. Um, that's where people um, tune in. They lean into that. I hope so. Yeah. This isn't like, boring. Yeah, that's true. I just, I don't care. I don't, I, you know, this planet exists exhaust me so i pay more attention to the other ones mm-hmm. um yeah four or five rounds two comedians each round i host it and we get an audience volunteer they dump a problem a burning question on us and then we 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 deal the cards but the comedians do the tarot reading and you know so it's all just kind of made up funny it's stuff. Bull, absolute bullshit it's crowd That's work great. they just it's improv too have they, they ever gotten close all the time. Really? Without even trying sometimes. They just read the cards very well. And then other times they're so far off. It's com- It's comical. And it's then just... you could also be like, oh, this is how they do it for real. Like you can see su- mm-hmm. the power of suggestion. So it's like yeah. you can make a, a general comment and then the person will zero in on the specificity of that generalization. Mm-hmm. Be like, oh my God, you got it exactly right. I do have a dog named Arthur. Yeah. And you're like, what? Yeah. Yes. Like, how did that happen? Oh, of course. That's exactly what I meant. That's exactly what I was saying this entire time. Yeah. Uh, it's just funny though because they when they do get it right, they're not using their intuitive powers at all. They're just like literally... And it's so funny. So many recurring jokes. Every show, even with a new cast of comedians, every time you pull a card that has swords mm-hmm. or wands, it's a dick joke comes yeah. up well, every single time. There's a lot of naked women on the tarot cards right. and everyone's always always like well this is a very big breasted woman things good things are coming to you you know it's always the same P- plenty plentifulness Plenti- is on its way yeah and then there's a chariot card so everyone makes a joke about gavin de and his number one hit single from many years ago chariot so it's you know we have our own little callbacks on the show that's fun it's fun and then a psychic comes in at the end and actually makes a legit of- psychic yeah so you get a legit psychic every time yeah it's kind of a great deal for audience members because it's like eight bucks yeah and and they get like a comedy show and we give away a free drink if you get a reading and they get a tarot reading at the end. The psychic is like... That's a good deal. It's a great deal. Um, it's very big with date nights, very big with girls' nights. Yeah. We've done couples readings. We've had drunk people come on stage and be like, I just went through a breakup. Yeah. What's happening? And it's like, oh, and it's it's just fun. And it can be... It's an uplifting thing either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
It's I'm, fun. I'm going to come out for that one. The last time I, I came out to Queens was for that cat call show. That was the last time you were in Queens. I don't go to Queens. Yeah, like, that's true. It's I'm a I'm a park sloper. It's a it's far. He's a park sloper. I mean, everybody. Well, there's like Brooklyn, and then there's like there's like this is my Brooklyn, and then there's Williamsburg, yeah. which is a totally different Brooklyn, <laughs> and then there's Long Island City, and then there's Queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like. It is far because mm. they don't make it easy. I got to go all the way in, uh, into like Union Square and then all the way over. Oh, yeah. Or all the way up and then over to like Queens, Queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the whole line. That's like me taking the whole queue yeah. all the way to the end. I know. I teach improv in Park Slope and it's always like very long for me to get. And you never call. I know. I'm sorry. It's okay. I need to. Now I mean, you know. Now that I know it's your Brooklyn, I like how you said there's my Brooklyn and then Williamsburg. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, Marty's, Marty owns Brooklyn, everybody. I just uh, like this one little, it's like a three block zone that's like my Mr. Rogers neighborhood of. of, of I love it. It's Mr. Marty's neighborhood. <laughs> And it's just I walk down the street. There's my uh, my hardware store man, mm-hmm. who's this uh, this old uh, Greek guy that has every day he wears uh, suspenders that look like tape measures. Oh, and I live in Astoria. I love old Greek men. Yeah. yeah. Hello, my friend. <laughs> Hello. Hello, my friend. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, yeah. sir. Hello, Victor. <laughs> and uh, there's like this this guy who works with Johnny. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> hey, guy in the dry cleaning place. Hey, this guy. They're like, Hello. It's Won't like, you be my neighbor? Yeah, it's great. If I'm if I'm if I if I walk to the two three at the at the right time of day up Fifth Avenue, I run into all the shop owners as they're opening their shops. Yeah, and it's just like, hey, hey, hey. Do, do they do they curtsy and ball change out of the doors of their of their businesses? And they're all animated. My by whole the life way. is a musical. There's birds and squirrels kind of dancing around me. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, well, maybe I'll read I've been alone too long. <laughs> <laughs> I, my, my imagination is officially oh, out of control. A little bit. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, Brooklyn to Queens is like, I, I joke about that, it, 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 the dating. I'm like, that's a long distance relationship. It is. It really is. Like, like, I think oh. I, would, I would rather match up with somebody in Philadelphia than yeah. like... Uh, uh, I want to say, uh, what's even further, like Hamilton Heights? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like Hamilton Heights. Heights. Where is that? Someone had just introduced me to Inwood. I had never heard of Inwood the other day. Inwood is and far, I, and I was like, that's Long Island, right? And they were like, it may as well be. I mean, it's Inwood is far, far. Yeah. yeah, I um. But if you talk to them, they're like, it's still Manhattan. No, oh, of, co- like, oh, of course, yeah. And you're like, you're like, okay, you're like sure it is. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I don't know. It has a different vibe. I mean, no, nobody tor- travels. Isn't that any- like 250th Street? I think it's like, yeah. Isn't it very close to the Bronx? Yeah. Yeah, it's not Manhattan. It's yeah. not. If you can't get Sparrow Pizza and not everything's lit up, it's not Manhattan. <laughs> Sparrow Pizza. Sparrow Pizza. Culture, everybody. It's yeah. Mall Pizza. It's right next to the Panda Express. It, it is. I always say I feel like I am like Sparrow Pizza personified because I'm very Italian, but my name is Brittany, so you'd never guess yeah. it. So I'm not authentic. I'm like Mall, mall pizza. Sparrow Pizza. Yeah, you yeah, got the Sparrows. Me. There's a Taco Bell. There's a Panda Express. Yeah. And then you go over and you're going to sneak all that into the movies. Yeah. And yeah. And you have me. It's a, your little taste of culture exactly yeah you've got a lot of stuff happening so i saw you a year ago and you were working on uh the cat call stuff and which is since folded it's folded i just i put it on it's it developed into something new so this was something you did it was you know it was a lot of work and then Mm -hmm. you because because of that you you turned it into this you're making me feel better about it so it turned into uh the violently violently funny Sure. Brand. Yeah. Yeah. And now, how did that come about? Because you have a, a, a another comedian that you work with, mm-hmm. so you have a partner, mm-hmm. and these are live shows mm-hmm. and a podcast. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about how did the podcast start? How did you meet her? What's the whole thing? I gotcha. Yeah, it, that is kind of that's an interesting way of looking at it. I feel like the feminine energy went from catcall to violently funny interesting yeah so violently funny is a, that is, a, that is a good way of putting it the other day i was like i don't know what to do with cat call anymore i just think i gotta put a pin in it and that's it anyways violently funny so cat call cat call went from like cat call like wink wink to don't you fucking say that to me literally yeah someone the other day was like is that dead i was like don't bring it up <laughs> don't speak of the dead that way it's um, got a black eye <laughs> Oh, it does. It's got two black. Eyes. Get it? Shh. Mm. Violently funny. Um, no, violently funny is a podcast at its core, but obviously we do live shows too. And now I guess we're like a comedic duo. Uh, I'm a survivor of domestic violence, as is comedian Onika McLean. Yep. This time last year, we met performing at Safe Horizon, a benefit show for uh, women and children who are victims of domestic violence. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like a female empowerment day where we got to do comedy and cheer them up and talk about DV and related issues. Uh, and Onika and I like, by the way, side note, hardest comedy show I've ever done, right? 
like we had a conversation up front and we were like okay so are we doing comedy do these people want to hear comedy yeah and they were like yeah 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 no make them laugh we want to bring comedy in and we're like all right so is it anything off the table yeah. and they were like no 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 they know laugh people say that people say that <laughs> and we're like are you sure and they're like no it's gonna be a good day we're gonna have food and drinks it's gonna be great and I walked in halfway through Onika's set, and it was a much smaller setup, much more intimate. And Onika, who, by the way, is a hilarious lover, wouldn't work with her if I didn't think so. I could hear a pin drop during her set. And by the time I walked in, I was like, she's not really telling jokes. She's, it's, it's just kind of shifted into funny but inspirational Was it more just like speaking? talking truth? It, that's what it evolved okay. into. Um, and I remember we locked eyes from across the room, and she was like, uh, and I was like, yep, okay, reading the room. Yeah, so, and it's just, you know, they weren't ready to laugh, the yeah. women, and that, which makes sense. Um, so we switched gears. I, I was sweating bullets during my set. The yeah. second I was like, jokes aren't going to work here. Let's just be myself and talk yeah. and connect with people. Break it down. Break it down, folks. lay it down. Um, and we just, I don't know, we, we, we bonded, and we realized our stories had a lot in common, and we were like, domestic violence isn't talked about a lot. What if we created a show, a podcast? That made it, you know, yeah, not not make intimate partner violence fun, but you know, make it digestible. So, what's a typical? How long are the episodes? And you have guests, yes, and who who have the guests been? And what do you guys talk about? Yeah, so we uh, Is that, does the guest have to be someone who's been in a relationship that, that's been like that? For the most part, yeah, okay. they have some connection to it or some related connection to sexual or domestic violence in some way um they're for anywhere from 45 minutes to just shy of two hours so we do try and to you do it at the comic, comic strip, strip. Yeah. yeah we record shout out the comic strip great place great location nice yeah. facility very nice facility yeah and our producer adam is wonderful too um they have been usually the core tenant is domestic violence or like exposing uh unhealthy not just a dating podcast, but unhealthy and toxic dating patterns. But yeah. obviously it's a complicated issue, so it bleeds into like body positivity, sex work, reproductive rights, mm -hmm. feminism, dating in general, so on and so forth. Um, and it's, yeah, usually everyone is a survivor or we have people on who just uh, are really strong, successful women mm -hmm. and, and have stories about how they like broke through barriers in their industry or unique career paths and stuff. So we had... Um, Dr. Georgia Witkin, she was on CNBC, Fox, CBS. She is uh, like uh, the, she's a professor. She leads up psychology and OBGYN practices at Mount Sinai. Writes for Psychology Today. Has penned like thirteen books. She was great. Um, then we had Erica Pittman, who was a big exec at Viacom and helped found Revolt TV with P Diddy. Like she's one who isn't mm -hmm. necessarily directly affected by DV, but has an incredible career story. You know, and it ranges. You know, it's it's guests for a couple episodes, and then sometimes it's just me and Onika mm -hmm. checking in and catching up. Um, but yeah, there's usually there's a, the usual tenant that brings us all together. Tenant is like. And We've do you have all... topics? Like, do you say this is going to be the topic for this entire episode? Is nah. it like a one topic or just kind of like a chat? It's just a chat. Okay. It's whatever is unique to that person's story. Like mm -hmm. I said, we've had someone who was a DV survivor, but then the conversation became a lot about eating disorders mm -hmm. and and fat shaming and body dysmorphia and things like that. So that's a great episode because now you're, you know, it's related audiences, related topics. Um, and then we had another DV survivor who's also a porn star, Minnie Scarlet. She's wonderful. Interesting. And then it was also now sex work came in. Into it and how sex, sex work, positive sex positive sex yeah positive. and these things are all interrelated and you know it's never a black and white issue who am i thinking of there is in this building there's a pr agency and they do pr for a kind of a feminist porn company cool okay it's like created by it's for women it's, it's like is porn it directors are women vixen I think it's, is it Erica Lust? I don't know who the person is, but I know Vixen is the website that's for, it's like directed by women, I think, if I'm not. And it's all like very natural. It's not all like, you know, glammed up. Now so we're sharing, all... now we're sharing nighttime routines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They're in the building like, and yeah. they have like the funnest uh, toys and topics that I'll like walk by. I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, they're very fun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. They're very sex positive and there's like images and posters that are all like very art. It's like very art. Artistic. Arts, artistic. Yeah. Kind of art house film adult stuff. And you're like, oh, this is very, very beautiful, body positive 
stuff. Well done porn. Yeah. Yeah. It's not all, yeah. you know, it's, it looks non-CGI. Yeah, it's not or enhanced all anal, or, anal with my stepdad, then he punches me in the face. At porn, which, listen, it's deeper than that. It is. Yeah. Because then they also talk about their feelings. I lo- Yeah. Which, you know, if you talk about it afterwards, you would feel better. No. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. Totally kidding. Um, yeah, we we have a sponsor on our podcast, too. Plus One Vibrators. Oh, nice. Again, too. Very sex positive. Yeah. You know, um, just very... Uh, the Pleasure shouldn't be a luxury. So they're, like, very affordable, accessible sex toys. Mm-hmm. And they're not... I love the brand. It's just a down-to-earth, this is what it's for. And yeah. quite a little pleasure. You know, we love them, and they're a huge supporter of the show. Um, so you get to give one out every episode? Yeah, we do giveaways every episode. And That's then, nice. Yeah, the girls love it. A lot of girls, we've had some people have their first orgasms through it, which really? is always fun, or their first sex toy, and we love those things just as much, too. That's exciting. So how long, yeah. ha- how many episodes do you have of Violently Funny? We have a season one with 10 episodes under our belt. Wow, that's great. Yes, from last year, October to December, and then we just started season two, and then we have our live recording. Yes, so at- let's talk about your live show that's going to be yeah. the 31st. Yes. At Caveat. Yes. What time? 7 to 8.30 p.m. Okay. Tickets are on sale now. Right now. $15 pre-sale, $20 at the door. Mm -hmm. Um, Whole variety. I'm going to go. Are you really? Yeah, I'll go. I hope so. It's going to be a really good time. If it's not in Queens, I'll go. It's not in Queens. It's very close to here. (laughs) I go to Caveat. I was at Caveat last night uh, for another show. Love that venue very much. Serious Matters. And I go there for another show called A Night of Humorous Readings, which is a great comedy reading shows so it's more about people that re, uh that write comedy for the new yorker or mcsweeney's mm-hmm. or whatever and then they read their stuff it's very good yeah um and then there's another show there modern whitney <sighs> there was one last night after the show i was there called um sketchy history okay and Ver- uh, victoria hoffman was there for that very cool and then i saw her after at uh, the bar on the corner she's so nice yeah she's great so funny yeah um and you also do stand-up comedy. I do. So uh, what stand-up comedy are you up to doing now? Uh, just, you know, getting up every night. Uh, are you getting up every night? Yeah. And you are going to be at Old Man Hustle tonight. Tonight. If people are listening to this live, which in theory they could be. Oh, really? If they oh, were, that changes everything. If they were at weeklyhumorous.com slash live, <laughs> this is a live stream. Come and stalk me. Um, people could go to Old Man Hustle and see Britney Brave. Please stalk me. It's the mo- it's the highest form of flattery. Have you it's had the only uh, way I'll know you're interested? Stalkers. Before? Um, I've definitely had, yeah. I have had people like show up at shows. I've had guys. This is a weird one. Guys that I've definitely been dodging dates with mm. see me post my show dates mm. and then show up and kind of ambush me. And then afterwards, they're like, "You were great," and I'm like, "Ah!" Like when I see them at the venue. Uh, I mean, it's nice that you were great and that you have an audience member. They're a fan. I say all the, all the creepers that slide into the DMs, 2020, they're, we're turning trolls into ticket sales in 2020. That's you just know, what we're doing. Buy a ticket, buy at least a couple of drinks. That's what I'm saying. And then don't talk to me after the show. But they trap. They try to trap me into hanging out with them. They're yeah. like, oh, hey. And like, what are you doing now? You want to go grab a drink? Or and I'm like, no, not. I'm going home, man. <laughs> you, you can't. Yeah, don't trap me on my job. Yeah. Um, but on that note. Uh, you know, the only way I'll ever know if someone's interested is if they're stalking me and suffocating me. So two spots tonight at Old Man Hustle, 8 and 10 p.m. Double. Double yeah. header for And you. then a, a show in Bushwick. I don't know the place's name at 9. So if you're in Brooklyn, you can come and kill me. If you're in, in Manhattan, you can come and kill me. <laughs> I feel like sometimes the shows that are out uh, in the middle of nowhere, it's like, there's this great show. It's <laughs> it's down the hall to the left. You go in the broom closet. You go down those mm-hmm, stairs, and mm-hmm. it's this great show in like this sub basement next to the boiler, but not that boiler, the other boiler. And if you smell, um, if you smell, what is it, formaldehyde? It's like it's okay. It's next to you smell embalming fluid. It's next to Bring a funeral this, home. It's wink fine. at this, and then you can get in. It's the yeah. best show in town. You're like, what are you talking? I about? have been <laughs> on those shows that are in like, and it's always Bushwick, by yeah. the way, too. That it's in an unmarked building, down yeah. the stair, down the stair, left to right, and then you have to say like a secret code word, and it's donation, yeah. and it reeks of weed. And then you go uh, in, and you're like, I bomb, and you're like, wow, uh, Jim Gaffigan and Jerry Seinfeld are here. This like, is what the wild. Hell? This place is, this yeah, is a great yeah. show. And by the way, we all bomb because it's Bushwick, and Bushwick doesn't want to laugh at anything. So. Oh, is that true? Yeah, are I don't they bad know. Audience members. I think I just, I just do well. I do, but yeah, fuck Bushwick. Yeah, fuck Brooklyn. Kind of, fuck yeah. you, Brooklyn, yeah. a little bit. Uh, I do. I have way better shows in Manhattan, Harlem, Bronx, Queens, yeah. everything else. Something about Brooklyn, not all the time, but certain rooms. It's just very... Don't say that. 
Yeah, she's too short and loud. I've seen some yeah. good. Um, it's fun following all of the comedy shows because you can't go to all of these comedy shows. Right? Yeah, there's too many. Yeah, yeah. You want to go to a bunch of them me. and you're like, I can't hit all these shows, but you see them on Instagram stories. Right. So I like seeing what I missed and I'm like, okay, maybe I'll go to that one. Bookmark next time. it for later. Yeah. Right. I'm like, next time I'm going to go to that show. Next time. But there are a couple that I, I want to get. There's one uh, up in Harlem that mm-hmm. looks really good. I think it's called Harlem Nights. Harlem Nights is a great comedy bar. Yeah. Joe Hill runs a great room there every Wednesday. I want to go there. I want to go to uh, the barbershop. Barbershop comedy is a good one that too. That looks really good. Shrine is good in Harlem. Um, they have a brunch show. I want to go to Butterboy at Littlefield, which is hilarious that I haven't been because I live literally two blocks away from it. Gotta get there. I know. It's too just, close. It, I think this is on Monday nights, and I think I'm I'm obviously watching The Bachelor on Monday nights. So <gasps> oh, I, Marty, you break my heart. I know. Gotta Martin, watch it. Gotta pri- watch. Pre- to, prior to recording, Marty says, "Do you watch The Bachelor?" <laughs> and I said, "No." Do you? And he said, oh, my God, yes. I mean, and I was like, oh, Marty. It's so bad. It's, it's so bad it's good. You have guilty pleasure shows. It's great. Have you seen that show on Netflix, The Circle? It looks so infinitely stupid. You're probably like the 10th person who's told me about the show in two days. I have not watched it. Everyone, lo- everyone loves it. My one friend, Josiah, <sighs> said that he loved it. Because he thought that it was scripted, which made it genius. And then people at his office were like, no, no, it's not scripted. It's reality. It's reality. He goes, there's no way this is reality. So because of that take, I want to see it. Just because it just to see what it it's seems like. so like it couldn't possibly be real. So the, I want to watch it because it of that. It seems like a total, what, farce of itself. It yeah. seems like a total, yeah. Um, it sounds like a Black Mirror episode. I think right? it's, it's, but it's it, real. It, but it's real. And I think it's just too on the nose with how people are. Yeah. Like it's like. It's kind of like the real world, right? From mm-hmm. my understanding. But they live in different rooms of a house and they don't get to actually see each other. They only interact through what likens... Uh, it's similar to like a dating app. They okay. only interact through an app. Like a chat. A chat. Okay. And they only share what they want and connect on that app when they want. Could and I'm one, like, this is too on the nose. Could one of the members just be an AI bot? Like a chatbot? They're probably all chatbots. Wouldn't chat that be great bots. if they were all chatbots? Like, this is the Target.com chatbot. Yes. This is the, you know, insurance chatbot. And they're all just talking to each other, and we're watching it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think so. I think it's everyone in customer service at FedEx. Like, yeah. I think. It's, that's what it is. That's who they got and who they pulled. That'd be funny. Or it's the people who, I'd watch that show. who are going to replace us in 10 years. The robots that yeah. are going to replace 10 years, 2 years. Um. I don't yeah, you know. It's not for me. It's a little too millennial yeah. for me. I think it's great. Yeah. I'll watch that. Okay. I watched all of the medical police. I have not seen that. It's great. No. Rob Hubel. Okay. It's from the guys that did uh, Children's Hospital. Okay. On, uh, Adult Swim. So funny. So high budget. David Wayne. It's really oh, good. Oh, I like David Wayne a it's lot. It's really yeah. good. So binge watch that. It's like eight episodes. I um, It's so it's like dumb comedy, but it's done in a really expensive way, yes. which I love. I love it. I mean, they can dump just like a ton, like this huge budget on this like action movie quality, but it's like the jokes are really silly. Lowbrow. And like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. lowbrow, but then they spent like so much money to make this. You're just like, I got to, you, you have to appreciate the amount that they that they spent just for this dumb gag. Yeah, just to execute a really dumb joke. Yep. Yeah, I do. I do have a respect yep. for that. I am. Um, I really like. It's old news at this point, but I'm. I'm dying for another season of. I think you should leave. So I. I get frustrated when I don't have a new season of a show that I love so much, and there weren't enough episodes of that. Like, no, it was at too all. short. Way too short. Like a traditional television, like. What you saw me watching before, which was a great episode of Castle or <laughs> a classic Murder, She Wrote. Those TV uh, shows on network had 22 episodes for one season. Mm-hmm. And then you watch one of these great shows on Netflix and it's like, oh, the five. episode has six, five. You're like, what? That's what not a fuck? season? Yeah. That's nothing. Well, I did the, another one too was Working Moms. I just, it's a Canadian sitcom. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah. Really funny. I love that there's three female leads and they're all funny. They're all really good character, you know, funny actresses. Uh, and I, I barreled through the three seasons and I loved the show that I rewatched it. And then I was like, come on, where's, this can't be it. There's so many untied storylines. Yeah. Unleft, you know. Then they're like, oh no, season four is coming. 
uh, winter 2020. Meaning like that. And I'm like, what? Like, what is this, Game of Thrones? Yeah, like, come how much, on. How much yeah. time did it, I mean, I get Game of Thrones took a while to make. It was real big. Yeah, it was real big. <laughs> you know, you got all these dragons. <laughs> it's hard to put all these dragons on the television. I get it. You had to wait for the dragons to grow up. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. It's yeah. continuity problem. But these know? women are alive right now. Yeah, they could just be making shows. Even if they're pregnant, even better. Yeah. It works for the show. Yeah. Yeah, and you do lose interest a little bit when a show takes that, at least for me. Yeah. Because then sometimes I feel like when it takes that long. Life takes off. Life takes off and without it. Could it take you someplace else. Yeah. You're like, sir, I'm into the circle right now. I was so. just about to be like, I might love working moms now and castle later. I don't know. Have you never seen Castle? No, I didn't even know about it until tonight. Ugh. And I thought it was starring Michael J. Fox, but I realized I don't have my glasses no, it's on. It's a Nathan Fillion, sure. who's wonderful. Uh, Which Firefly. Which we have concluded is jacked Michael J. Fox. When you see him, you'll you'll think that's a ridiculous thing to say. But well, no, you know, you're right. He has kind, kind of that. Thing. He has like 80s Alex B. Keaton hair, but okay. he's just much like I guess just like thicker of a person. Okay. He's got like a jaw. I like that. Um, and now he's on The Rookie, which is the ABC uh, show, which is great. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a network TV person. Interesting. I'm more... Network you know, I'm, TV nauseates me now. I'm watching some Blue Bloods on a Friday night. Mm. You know, me, I'm me and Donnie Wahlberg mm. and some, you know, Tom Selleck. Mm. <laughs> Tom I Selleck a, is still in the game. I have, a, Damn. I have a rich and full life. On Friday nights, I'm watching my Magnum P.I., my Blue Bloods, and Hawaii Five-0. And that's all you need. Have a nice pizza. That's it. Get, go to bed early. That's that's the dream. I'm uh, I'm about to turn 29 next week, and I uh, wow 29. It's almost all over. It is almost all over. It's a lot going into your last year, your 20s. Yeah. Now when I do stupid things, I'm just like, all right, we only got we only got a year left to where this is even remotely justifiable. Get your shit together. I don't even remember my 20s anymore. I don't. I, it's a blur. I, I feel like I've been in my 20s for 40 years. Yeah. I'm like okay. You know, so like, long. even when I was 23, I was like, OK, I'm like, I'm 50 on the inside. Like, let's just. It's nice yeah. getting older. You definitely care less about a everything, lot of stuff. everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like I can wear a fedora now and I don't even think <laughs> twice. About it. That's how you know. You That's don't how you care. know I'm not in my 20s anymore. That's how you know you don't care what anybody thinks of you. Right around 27, <laughs> 28. I was like, I turned to a friend and I said, isn't I said, isn't sitting down great? And that's yes. how I knew. And then she was like, yeah. It's yeah. Like, Sitting is really underrated. It's the it best. feels incredible. Like I'm like, oh, these chewable one-a-days are delicious. Delicious. I, my parents were like, what do you want for Christmas this last Christmas? And I said, I would really love a dirt devil. Mm-hmm. And my mom was like, uh, and I was like, I just need a really good vacuum. I need yeah. a really good. And that's good when suction. I was like, I'm dead inside. Yeah. yeah, that's it. With like a nice long cord. Yeah. And None I want a short cord business. I want a teapot. I just got an essential oils diffuser. Nice. Yeah. I follow. I, I what if I have a late night comedy show, I nap in the green room. You know, I sit out of fights a lot. Too. Like, you know, things where you're like, that makes me really angry. And then two seconds later, yeah. you're like. I'm out of out. breath. Yeah. Opt out. Opt out. That's un- unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I can't. That's that's a young woman's game. Yelling about that. Like, I can't. We have a. I have a family chat. Uh, as many people probably do on their phones. So on my iPhone, there's like a group chat mm-hmm. that's like my parents and my two sisters, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of my sister's kids and just like my mom texting stuff, and my mom will write. Specifically to one of the sisters on the group chat, like mm-hmm. instead of writing to that sister, it's to all of us. Yeah, and sometimes it'll be a lot of stuff, and and my dad just doesn't want to see all this stuff, and my dad will write unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is great. Oh, that's so good. Unsubscribe, he's yeah. Oh, he's like, what is this? And his phone just starts like blowing up. I'm like, it's just the family. He's like, Ugh. oh god, yeah, yeah. That's no funny. Worries. Yeah, my mom just goes whenever my mom it doesn't want to text anymore. She goes, okay, bye bye, is what she just texts, and she signs every text Karen at the end. Does she really? It's her auto signature. It says <laughs> Karen. Like I wouldn't know that it was That's her. Great. Yeah, and it just it adds a weight to everything she I says. I think I saw a little bit of Karen action because you have just spent came back from a month in Florida. Yeah, Miami. So nice. Yeah. Where in Florida were you? Miami. I didn't even know that. I thought you were just making a, a sound like Miami. I am Miami. 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 But Miami. you were saying Miami. Miami. Miami, okay. Miami Florida, three hundred five. Home. Nice. Home of Pitbull. Um. Mr. Worldwide, in case you haven't heard of him. Um, and your mom's down there. Mom and dad are down there. And I think I saw her doing your hair. Sure. That was one night. Yeah, she was doing my hair. She's a cosmetologist. 
does she do a specific fun style that you don't normally do? No, she like redid like I put a little red in and okay. like dark brown and nice. that was it. Yeah, I just take advantage of having. I it's was fun. like, you know, I recommend getting a mom who's a cosmetologist. And if you're you an have any control. only child, only child. That's nice for you. Rotten, yeah, spoiled, you're just rotten. spoiled. No, I'm not at all. Not even a little bit. Um, yeah, only child. I just, I, I just when I was home for the entire month, I just felt like I was constantly third wheeling for my parents. Great. Yeah, it's when you learn a lot. Yeah. You stay home. Uh, you don't have to buy any food. No, it like was a, a nice month. month. Yeah, it's just whatever's in the fridge. You're just like, oh, it's like an open, it's like an open buffet here. This is great. Yeah, and the only t- turn off is I just, you know, the trade off is I just have to teach my mom how to double click on a mouse yeah. eight times a day. She's like, Brent, and I'm like, I like to I'm cook like, for everybody when mm-hmm. I'm home. I like to. Do a I of- bake for everyone when I'm. What home. do you bake? Everything. I baked a bunch of cookies, cheesecakes. What's all that specialty. I make a double layer cheesecake. So around the holidays, I did. How do you make cheesecake? Um, cheesecake is like is eh. that cream cheese? Lots of cream cheese. A lot of cream cheese. Lots of sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's a double layer. So I do the top layer is pumpkin pie, and then the bottom layer is cheesecake. So it's like mm. a double. It's pretty good. And that's and then, a store bought crust. Base? Nah, it's homemade crust. Homemade crust. Is yeah. That graham, graham cracker? Graham crackers and everything. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Cookie crust. Yeah. That sounds None great. of that store bought bullshit. I'm not an authentic woman in a lot of ways, but that is one. I do apple pie. I used to do apple pie 100% from scratch. I'd make my own crust. I'd do the whole thing. You'd have to use like lard and mm-hmm. it takes forever. It and does. you know what? Store bought. Apple pie crust is great. Yeah, it's fine. If you it's if it's not the thing you want to dedicate time to, it's not. I did it for a while. I'm like, this is such a waste. It's of a time. time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so true. It is. It's such a waste. And then you don't even want to eat it. Doing your own apples. It. You got to do your own apples. Yes, you do. So you peel the apples. You, I have an apple peeler core that mm-hmm. I use. And then you got to do the whole with the seasonings, and that's fun. Mm-hmm. And then we dump uh, Grand Marnier into it. The Ooh. families, they like, they dump in the booze and the grandy. They, 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 they do the whole thing all alone. The whole alone. thing is soaked oh, yeah. in alcohol. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting because it's like I, I really do like to bake, but when I'm not in the mood to make it, bake, it, it's evidently clear because somewhere along the line, the recipe gets just a little fucked up. Yeah. Like a little bit. Yeah. You're like, oh, I forgot that one thing. I always, when I do anything, I'm more of a, I like to cook. I don't, I don't like to bake because I'll forget mm. that thing. Thing you need like baking powder yeah you know, or salt or, or you'll put baking soda instead of baking powder and then you can't figure out why like the whole cake is inverted or yeah. whatever and you're like oh there you go a couple years ago my mom is an incredible cook hates baking mm-hmm. she's the store-bought one and i'm like no uh and we were at thanksgiving my whole family in jersey they flew up and we were doing she had this whole pumpkin muffin something recipe pumpkin muffin pumpkin muffin it was yeah. supposed to be but she is doesn't have the precision for baking. I feel like cooking's more like intuitive. Yeah. Like, okay, put a little more. And she just goes, we're making it. I go, where's the recipe? And she's like, it's up here. Yeah. And I was like, that's not valid. Where's the recipe? So she goes, it's two eggs. And then she goes, there are three. I don't, and I'm like, mom. Eggs are important. Eggs are important. <laughs> we can't kind of fuck this up. And, you know, so I'm going, this is going to be a disaster. And sure enough, it was. Yeah. And it was like the laughing stuff. Like they were like a, pasty disgust they tasted like pumpkin play-doh is what they came out and tasted like Mm -hmm. uh but then my family's full of jokesters so as people started trickling in for thanksgiving weekend we were like "Ah, have you tried aunt karen's muffins (laughs) and they were like no And we were like oh my god they came out so good so good and then filming everyone's reaction as they take the first bite and they go what the fuck they lose a tooth (laughs) yeah it's stuck to the roof of their mouth yeah um Oh, me. do you yeah. have a awkward or cringeworthy story? I mean, where to begin? Something recent and, you know, it doesn't have to be like horribly deep. Have you fallen down recently? It happens to me so <laughs> much. <laughs> I fall in and I can't get up. It happens to me so much that I I don't even know where to where to begin. I had a recent story, a celebrity story I can tell okay. you. This actually just came to my mind. I haven't told it in years. I was uh, I so I used to work in the music business, right? right? And when I was an assistant, I worked this premiere party. They had me working after after work and just checking people in. Mm-hmm. You know, wristbands, all that kind of stuff. And I was sick as a dog over it. Like, didn't want didn't want to be there. Was really, really sick that night, I remember. But my boss sent me to work for an extra two or three hours. And there's some famous people, some people that I recognize. And I'm checking them in. I'm, like, dejected. Uh, and all of a sudden, I think the event's underway and the checking in is done. And in comes a, a, 
Robert De Niro who Ooh. comes at the check-in table. And the so, Irishman. The Irishman, yeah. He's not Italian at all. He's Irish, you know, in real life. Is he? Yeah. Someone told me that. Biggest letdown of my entire life. Interesting. Anywho, I digress. It was free candy at this event. I was slouched over, like snot hanging out of my nose, so sick. I had a mouthful of peanut M&Ms. And Robert De Niro goes, hello, at the table. And I go, (laughs) (laughs) And he goes, have you seen my wife? And I said, I don't know your wife. And he went, uh, and walked in. Who is his wife? Um, I don't know who his wife was at the time. I still don't know who his wife was. But it's very funny that it's like the biggest movie star in the world. And, and there you, was you like did not have the answer for him. Snot and peanut M&M's. And I didn't give a fuck like at all. And I just, and he assumed I would know who he was, which that is was your, really funny. That was your big break. And I missed it. And you that's, it. and that's you know, why I'm a stand-up comedian and not an actress. No. Um, but I just think it's so funny that he goes, hello. And I go, ah. And he goes. Have you seen my wife? Have you seen my wife? And I, go, I don't know your wife. And I think goes, it's a funny, uh, it's a funny typical old man question to ask a stranger. Like, do you know where I'm my wife? To, where am I supposed to be? Me? Do you have my my wife has my wallet? Where is she? Yeah. So when I was working, uh, I guess that's not that awkward. No, but it's fine. It's funny. It's funny. You know, yeah. When I was working at Letterman, uh, when I first moved to the city, I worked in the audience department, and yeah. I dealt with. The audience, but also I would sometimes deal with uh, guests and stuff. So it was like people would come in, they would get out of their cars. And I was mm-hmm. on the street corner, and there was the stage door, which was beyond the Hello Deli, where Rupert G used to be. Mm-hmm. And I was dealing with like a line of people, and this big black SUV came out, and it stopped. And the door opened, and it was, um, oh, God, who was? I was, I was saying Maria Branford, but it wasn't Maria Branford. Huh. Who am I thinking of? Uh, it was Amy Sedaris. Huh. Amy Sedaris gets out with this... Big poofy dress, and uh-huh. she's very, very tiny. She's about your height. Or really? Shorter. I yeah. didn't know. And she got into his lunch. She goes, "Am I supposed to be talking to you?" And I was ah! like, "I was like, hello. I don't think so, but I'm going to find someone who you are supposed to talk you know, to." And she was like, "Okay." Uh-huh. We just, she, was just like, she was like, "Hello. Am I supposed to be talking to you?" Yeah. Like, I'm like, "Hello, Amy Sedaris. No, but let me let me get someone for you." That's funny. It was just like she was so delightful and and friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Hello, stranger with a clipboard. You look like you like you work you here. And I'm like, know. I kind of, I guess I, I, I'm kind of authoritative with my clipboard. This yeah. is me. I'm like 23. Yeah. People think clipboards have the answers of the world. You see someone with the clipboard. I'm a 23 and year old, like, probably wearing cargo shorts. We love it. <laughs> with with my little clipboard. Yeah. It was fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Truly, Marty, I just feel like so many awkward. Not uh, not a lot embarrasses me. I, it takes like a really a lot for me to for me to really be like humiliated so for like which is probably (laughs) so tell me (laughs) about the show uh what's gonna be on the show on the 31st at caveat oh yeah violently funny yeah and it's you and what is your partner's name on the onika onika mclean yeah and she also does stand up yeah yeah yeah. and it's gonna be you two hosting yeah and then how many guests oh so we have a whole variety show planned for everybody tell me about the variety show I would love to. Okay. Um, it's me and Onika b- b- bullshitting up at the top, which is how every episode begins. Um, it's just us yelling at each other and riffing off each other for about 15 to 20 minutes and catching up. Uh, we have someone from a portion of the proceeds for the show are going to Safe Horizon, where we met. Okay. DV, nonprofit, leading nonprofit in the country as well, too. Um, if someone from Safe Horizon is going to talk, so we're going to do a brief interview with them about... Just like a normal podcast recording, like yeah. a live recording. Um, and then the show gets fun. And then we have a panel of comedians who also identify as survivors. And we're going to all go around and tell a joke that we've written about domestic violence. Because we all have them. And mm-hmm. we don't, we can't quite, you just can't always, like, we know, I don't know if I'll be able to tell those jokes tonight. What's a, typical, what's a typical domestic violence joke? Is it like something like looking at the bright side of yeah, or about very retelling. traumatic Thing. retelling your experience but doing it in a funny way because you're a comedian so you see everything right. through a through a it's jokeable way yeah. um like i you know i have, I have some i have all this stuff about how i like older men and i like angry men that i can fight i like really fighting with my boyfriends so i have some pun like the punchlines like i have a black belt and white men and stuff like ah. that yeah and like stuff like that or like uh when you meet someone named Brittany, you either want to take him to the mall or punch him in the face. If you're my ex-boyfriend, you got to do both. Oh. Lucky guy. Yeah, I know. It gets an old, but I love it. I love yeah. that joke, you know. Um, it's empowering. Yeah, it is. It's um, Well, you're taking it back. Yeah. You know? um, and something about... Because I, I, I saw something, and I just love that I'm just talking all over you. I'm sorry. Oh, my God, no. But I saw something on Instagram where you were documenting, uh, re-upping a, a restraining order. 
I was. So I got denied, but that's okay. The they, system beat me. They can deny you. Yeah. To re up a restraining order. Yeah, because it was. Is it a of, yearly uh, thing? Is it? It varies. Mine was two years, and okay. I thought I was being proactive and just being like, eh, I don't want him bothering me. Not that I even think he would. So but, you were doing yeah. it before it ran out. Yeah. Okay. And I spent a whole day at court. So then they have. They said you have to wait until it runs out. Uh, no, they just said no to extending it completely. They said. We say you are fine now. Yeah, and that he did nothing wrong. To which I said to the male judge, tiny penis you have. You have a tiny, tiny penis. Wow. No, I didn't. I, I almost did, though. But um, That seems like a broken system. It was a little bit broken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he said, he goes, I, I don't know, Miss Bravey hasn't done anything wrong. And I was like, hmm, that's a big statement. Is there a time amount where he, he, has, to do, he has to do something for it to get reapplied? Uh, that, would be the, <laughs> that would be the ideal case. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, can you just come and hit me one more time so I have a reason? Just pull my hair a little bit. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's no, it's it, it's it's just the logic contradicts itself. Yeah, it does. Because it was like, well, he hasn't done anything wrong, and he didn't. And I'm like, well, he because he couldn't. He had a restraining order exactly for two years. Like, so kudos to him for following the right, rules. Right. You know, once in his life. Right. And then um, since he did nothing in two years because he wasn't legally allowed to come near you. Now it expires. Yeah. And now we hope for the best. That, that's exactly what he said. He said, I said, but we what happened? And he goes, I don't know. I can't control what happens out there. Wow. And I was like a plague on both your houses. And I stormed out of the courtroom. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I was like, I was like, this is an outrage. It is, it is an outrage. That doesn't yeah. really make, that's a little backwards. It's like crazy. It's crazy too when you go to get a restraining order. There's like it a lot. Of, I think it's because the system is so saturated too. Yeah. And I get it. There's there's like a girl next to me, and she's like, "You're getting a restraining order." It's like deep in Brooklyn, the courthouse. And I was like, "Yeah." And she's like, "I'm getting one because my ex boyfriend is dating a new bitch, and I'm gonna get a restraining order on his new bitch so I could go and beat her up, and she can't do nothing about it." Uh uh uh. And then I was like, "Whoa!" And That's she's like, "Logic." Yeah. And she's like, "Why are you getting one?" And I was like, "It's not the same. No. It's just a different situation." Yeah. You know. Um, that was less. Uh, There's less pl- uh, conniving planning. Yeah. F- f- forward thinking. <laughs> yeah. Of what the plan? That she was kind of playing a chess match. A little bit. Yeah. 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 That's like I, I could see how that's bending the law a little. She had she had a couple of moves planned. It was very funny to see her walk out of the courtroom and then one go, "I didn't get it." Fuck. And then I walk and I was like, hmm. she looked at me the initially and she was like, "Good luck." This is like years ago, and I was like, "Oh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed." Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was I. I wanted to try and keep him. Restraining orders are like blocking people IRL. Yeah. You know. And yeah. I wanted to kind of keep that. Yeah. You know, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, panel of comedians that all identify as survivors telling jokes. We're going to answer dating questions from the audience too. It'll be funny. That's great. Are yeah. you going to have any giveaways? Um, plus one vibrator. Going to have some vibrators there yeah. at the live event. Yeah. All right. And uh, live music. We have a musician, a soul singer. She wrote an entire EP chronicling an abusive relationship from like start mm-hmm. to exit. And she's very talented, so she's going to close the show with some an acoustic set. That sounds great. It's a little bit of everything. It's going to be a really fun night. So everybody needs to come out to Caveat on January 31st. Um, what time? 7? 7? 7 to 8.30. 7 to 8.30. Is yeah. that a Friday? Friday night. Friday night. No so, excuse, man. Yeah, you need plans. Friday night. Go to Caveat's website to get tickets. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and do you have a violently funny website? Yeah, we do. Well, it's um, violently funny on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, Anchor, SoundCloud, Instagram. Anywhere you get podcasts. Anywhere you get podcasts. Is it at Violently Funny on Instagram? Yep, at Violently Funny Nicely Podcast. Done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, And if you know, if you're in New York it, at any given moment in a comedy scene, you'll see me and Onika screaming close enough. So we're, we're allowed to. Well, I pair. look forward to seeing you guys screaming at each other in real life on the 31st. Yes. I'm we come out. we are our own abusive relationship. We joke about it all the time. We're like, this is a little toxic, but we and love it. And where do you usually do, do you do Old Man Hustle a lot for stand-up comedy? Sometimes. Yeah, I'm all over. I'm at a Caroline's a lot lately. That's great. Greenwich Village Comedy Club. Um, Have you been to Broadway. that, uh, the new Eastville Comedy Club in I have. Brooklyn? It's very nice. Is it? Yeah. yeah I saw it when it was closed and I kind of peeked in and I was like, oh, it looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did the tile the no, same way. No, it's nice. It's very nice. Um, I don't know. I'm all I'm I'm all over. I'm at Broadway a lot, Caroline's a lot. Where can people see your schedule for stand up? Brittanybrave.com, baby. 
She nice. finally got a website. That's great. I consider myself someone who has her shit very together, but first, for, I took me so long to get a comedy website. Nearly two, almost two years. It, it just was like, oh, Also, I just follow you. Uh, is it at Brittany Brave on Instagram? Yeah. And uh, you put stuff up on the Instagram stories a lot all the time. I do. I, have, I try to be. I'm trying to create content for the kids. This is great. I'm willing to hurt myself for a good TikTok video. <laughs> Are you on the TikTok? I just figured it out, and I get I have a seizure every time I log in. I can't figure it. Out. It's isn't like, it, blah, isn't, blah, it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like it, isn't it just Vine from 15 years ago? It, it's like Vine meets Snapchat. Yeah, it meets, it's everything in one. And how long are the videos on TikTok? I think I think they're like still upwards of like a minute. Okay. Everyone. Adult and teens alike look like they just sniffed a lot of glue before they went on TikTok. That's like the... Truly. That's the attention span now for any consumption of content. It's like one minute. Yeah. it's exa- That's it. Give me your best shot. You have one minute. One minute. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Really? You've got like 30 seconds. Because about halfway through that minute, I figured out if I like you or You're not. You're like, I'm done. Yeah. It's so seconds. funny with stand-up, too. You feel it immediately. Like, yeah. you just lose them so easily. Even if collectively you have a really good set. Yeah. You're like, yeah, that's it. That's all it. T- that's she's all on her know. phone. Fuck her. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Phones have to be just the bane of the existence of comedians. You're just like, they're checking their email. Yeah. Like you can see that glowing screen from yeah. the stage. You're like, what, what's going on? Here? Yeah. I wish there was a thing where it, it like just deactivated everything and like a little zone that would be really so nice just watch because they do that thing where they put the phones in the little bags sometimes. at the cellar they do i think do yeah that. That's yeah smart. yeah that is smart and it forces you to to pay yeah pay attention or i just feel like to a lot of people it sometimes it's not malintent but they just feel like they need to capture it at concerts too yeah and it's like or just capture it here yeah the, the original way i had to tell someone yeah. to stop recording at a guaranteed <laughs> delivery show and she didn't mean anything by it. No, I'm sure. She didn't even understand what I was asking her. I yeah. was like, you can't, you can't. I'm like, please stop recording. Like, yeah. the, the comedian didn't say anything. And I was like, can you please stop recording? And she was like, what? And I'm like, Just, yeah, you had to stop recording. Yeah. And she was like, okay. Like, yeah. it, like, she had no idea why I was talking to her. Like, no one even gets it. Like, yeah. At all. Or I I've, like, I've even been on shows, too, that record it, and they're like, uh, sometimes it's professionally recorded, and they're like, can we just upload this? And I'm like, or when people do it on Instagram... It, that's also frustrating for a comedian if something's on the newer side. I actually think I saw Aparna Nancherla tweet something about this like a while ago. Mm-hmm. So she was like, please, 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 if you come to a show of mine, do not record. Yeah. Like it, actually record it and put it on your Instagram story. Right. Sometimes stuff is new and I'm not entirely comfortable with it yet. Yeah. And then it's it's out there. Yeah. You know, it's that's annoying. It's very annoying. Anytime I promote the guaranteed delivery show on Instagram, I always do sound off. Yeah. You know, so it's just like you see them on stage. Hey, they're on stage. They're moving around. They're they're doing stuff. Yeah. You can't you can't capture the whole joke on whatever 10 seconds it is anyway. No, so no. turn off the sound. Yeah. We have a nice little uh boomerang of of someone be doing something funny on stage. That's fine. That's it. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah. If you want to see them do the jokes, just go see a show. Yeah. Yeah. Or watch them on Netflix. I just didn't even too. It's, you know, there's so many things about a comedy show. It's just consumed differently. People just show up and just don't laugh too. Yeah. And you just see it the entire show. The, like, not only you, you're just like, why are you here? Yeah. Did you, <laughs> did you lose a bet? Yeah. Like, did you, like, why? I'd rather you not. Yeah. I just don't even be here. I'd rather a crowd of four people, but they're no. like, really want to see New that's, York comedy. Yeah, that's definitely and, true. I've been, I've been to a, like the, a tiny, tiny show and it was a great crowd. Yeah. And I've been to shows that have been packed with people and they were horrible preposterous crowds. awful yeah i've done like a, a room of 300 i remember my worst bomb and i love broadway comedy club my worst bomb was like it was a sold out show on a saturday 300 and it's they were just so drunk by the time i went on stage it's no fault of broadway it was just you know what it was yeah and then i had a spot right after in like a bushwick laundromat i think for like eight people and they're they're fans now that yeah. will come to a show and i'm like isn't that funny how it works yeah it's just, you know because some of those small shows you can make such a connection with the crowd yes. where they like they're like oh i love this person yeah especially if you're you get good at that's a show good for crowd work too yeah because i don't know if they want to really hear your your setup punch setup punch yeah they're close enough you might as well let them know who britney is at that yeah. point there's and a like, great show you know. um in fort green at hungry ghost coffee shop it's keenan steiner's show keenan's cool yeah yeah i know keenan it's called comedy at the corner and he does it uh, i think twice a month that is his show and it's yeah. a teeny teeny weeny coffee shop love it they keep it open late just for the show usually closes earlier and then they they like serve beer just for the show and it's tiny but like the crowd is like 
fun. Yeah. And they don't need a ton of people to make it like a good crowd. And I've seen, he had like Ted Alexandro there. Nice. He had Rosebud Baker there. Nice. Like yeah, he, yeah. Gets, he pulls in like some talent. And I think it's like a five dollar donation, and I'm just like, and it's so close to me that I come out just because I'm like, well, it's right there. Why not? There's a couple of shows where I'll always go. Like I'll always go to Union Hall for Picture This, which is a great show. Mm-hmm. Jason Chatfield and um, uh, Ian Ian uh, Fidance. Nice. And um, Littlefield sometimes, but I still need to go to Butterboy. And uh, what's the one? Um, up, 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 up. Cherry Tree Bar. Yeah has the best back room for comedy and you can do the bad news show which is run by uh carmen lagala and then you can do thursday's airplane mode and that's uh jeffrey airplane mode is jeffrey good. asmos yeah and also um um black guys tyler richardson tyler richardson who oh, i love i've so done that funny. show many times he's very so fun funny. show yeah, that saturday is at uh, cherry tree once yeah. a month yeah but that place is so much fun and it's like small but you can get pizza and it's like the great like classic brick back wall you yeah know, like comedy wall yeah and like has this like deep red spotlight you can't put comedy everywhere it's not like music yeah. where people are like oh my god beautiful acoustic singer songwriter you know so yeah. it's like you really the conditions have to be have to be right yeah. like the random things could take somebody out of a comedy show that like, you don't even know yeah like it's like even like greenwich village comedy club i've always had a good time there and i think it's the way the room is set up yeah. it's an older club but it's like low ceilings right. dim lighting you need to have Everyone's, like this intimacy yes yeah yeah they gotta feel like they're in it with you um yeah i've done apartment shows some apartment shows are so fun too yeah. people are just like sitting around getting high having a beer yeah on a cat and you're like oh i can actually really maybe like try some new stuff and like yeah. lean into it here with people because they're open they're open they have no expectations no 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 yeah. it's like an interesting thing as a young comedian to be like how do i prepare this for when i'm older and yeah. knock on wood playing bigger venues theaters and new wood new wood that's what I call the guy that I just started dating. Hey. Oh, my. No, I'm not dating anyone. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> no time. And um, no no time and no interest from anyone. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, how do you prepare as, an, as a young comedian for your, like, y- you get the, you get good at the laundromat shows. Yeah. And the intimate pizzeria shows. And then it's like that incremental. So if you could do that, then how do you capture that feeling? In a room of 300. Yeah. Or in a theater. And how do you, you know. That's the, yeah, that's the real test of like that next step where it's like, yeah, you can kill for, you know, 25 people, but then they throw you in, you know, 300. Radio City and can you, you know, how, how do you handle that kind of a crowd? Right. Can you hold, can you hold your shit together? How, yeah. Yeah. A good joke can travel can travel throughout a, a big enough venue like yeah. that. Yeah. But then also sometimes too, big crowds when they're the right crowd, sometimes when they're bigger there's a natural good energy because it's a big show. They're excited. They're excited. They're, they're like, ready. oh, well, a yeah. ton of people are here. We're in it. Yeah. They're, they're, they are there to laugh. Yes, exactly. Like when you have a crowd that's there to laugh, mm-hmm. that's a great audience member. Exactly. You know? I've also had really small crowds too where it, you could tell the fact that it was a small crowd was like detrimental. Mm-hmm. Like the people that were there were like, why is there only 10 people here? And yeah. then like that too. So. It's yeah. like being at a restaurant when you're like you're the only person at the restaurant. Yeah, like, and is then, this food going to kill me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the restaurant you have Yelp you can hop on yeah. and be like, is this what's uh <laughs> someone died of food poisoning last month? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. It's all a learning process. This is exciting. So how many minutes are you doing tonight at Old Man Hustle? I think uh, eight. That feels right. Okay. Eight and you have it all in your head already? You know what you're gonna do? I'm doing all new stuff. Ooh. Yeah, that's yeah. Fun. I gotta I gotta get the uh I gotta get the new jokes up to snuff. Okay. Yeah. Get so to work them out. Work, work out, them out. Work out the the, the wordage. Yes. Yeah. We're working. It, it, there's something there. There's is something what she, there. the way you always tell her. There's yeah. something there. Gotta find that twist. Yeah. I did a lot of writing while I was home, and I didn't get on stage at all for a month. So a lot of this last week has been like it's going up, getting back into it. And now I feel a little. I feel more into like a groove. Mm-hmm. But it's all new stuff. It's all that stuff that I spent writing and in my head for the last month that I'm just like. Is this? Is there something here? Is this anything? Is this anything? Is this and something? Maybe. Yeah, I'd like to have. I'd like to have, uh, you know, another fifteen to twenty in the next month or so. That's amazing. Yeah. So. Well, I'm excited about the show. It's violently funny. Yeah. It's a podcast. It's a live show on the 31st of January at Caveat. So yes. get tickets to go see Brittany uh, there mm-hmm. or at Old Man Hustle or the multitude of places at BrittanyBrave.com. Yes. Follow you at Brittany Brave yeah. on Instagram mm-hmm. and Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Brit Brave. Brit Brave on Twitter. Yeah. 
Um, thanks so much for coming on Talk Radio. Thank this was you for having me, Marty. And I broke in the new desk. Broke in the new desk. Yes. We'll see if it all falls down. I made this desk. You can still smell the stain. Um, mm. I've been in here all day just getting high. Off it smells of like a Pier 1. It does smell like a Pier 1. Wow. The Pier 1 imports. It's comforting. <laughs> Until you fall over. Yeah. It's um, comforting and also my head's spinning. No yeah, kind of. I kind of have a headache. That's okay. <laughs> Everybody kind of has a headache after listening to my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Mine too. Yeah. yeah. So follow uh, the podcast online yeah. uh, at po- uh, Talkward Podcast and follow Weekly Humorous at Weekly Humorous. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thanks, Brittany Bray. Yeah. Yay. Right. Thanks for listening to Talkward. Please subscribe, follow us, and visit weeklyhumorist.com.